I'm Nick Hanashevsky. As a professional saltwater fishing journalist, I've explored the world's wildest fishing destinations. Now, I'm bringing you there, into the saltwater underground. There's always something about family when it comes to fishing. There's family you were born with and the family you make as you go through life. My first journalist job was working at the Fisherman Magazine, where I met some new family, Captain Dave DiGennaro, his son Nicky, and Austin Pirelli. We all landed on the cover of the magazine in our tenure there. Let's just say we knew the right people. And our life paths continue on in the fishing industry. This is a story of four good friends getting back together to explore Barnegat Bay's prolific fishing. All right, today we're here in Barnegat Light, New Jersey, some of the most hallowed fishing grounds on the East Coast. Today I'm gonna meet up with uh, my old school buddies, Captain Dave DiGennaro on the High Flyer and Austin Pirelli, both of who I worked with at the Fisherman Magazine. Today we're gonna try fish Barnegat Bay for some bluefish, weak fish, striped bass, kingfish, whatever we can find biting. But it looks like we're gonna have to try and beat the weather here. There's a storm front coming in right now. my breath for a second. <laughs> gonna start throwing these Savage Gear sand deals back to the submerged jetty, see if we can find some stripers or bluefish that'll hit them. All right, put the Savage Gear sand deal right back there at the submerged jetty, hooked up immediately. Feels like a little blue. There he is. <laughs> Woo, little bluefish right here. It's a typical. <laughs> Typical summertime bar to get blue. Even though they're small, these little small two pounders, they still got the choppers that'll rip you right open. Beautiful little fish. Full yellow eyes. <laughs> there he is, let's find another few. Dog. Easy, easy. A little Brooklyn side step yeah. on now. <laughs> Putting the Brooklyn boots yeah, to Yeah, I did, I did. I dropped it down a little bit. Uh, he wants to burn me, he wants to burn me over the jetty. Just putting the boots to this nice fish. I don't know what it is yet. We've been getting some nice blues, but I don't know. This one feels like it has some shoulders. Blue, blue. Nice one, beautiful. We're getting there, we're getting there. Nice one, go. Not bad, beautiful. That's what happens with soft plastic, but it's okay. Let this guy go. Look how sick the rip is here in Barnegat Light. Barnegat Inlet. Just pitching back into that boiling surf. Hoping for a bass, getting blue. I'm only leaving this close so they don't get wet. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> nice, all stood. Yeah. Chopper after chopper. Right. I that So I need one guy on the front piling to hold the boat in and one guy on this back piling. That's the live grass shrimp. Right. That is the bait. Get some little sticklebacks in there, some cool stuff. That's the weak fish and striper candy, huh? And yes, blackfish, nonetheless. Everything in this area eats it. You know, definitely all the bay fish and even a few ocean species. Grass shrimp in a Barnegat Bay. Just a old fashioned tradition, truly. This stuff's like gold in Barnegat Bay. Chris the shrimper hooks us up. 
No one ever knew Chris's last name, and he never will. <laughs> <laughs> Just like anything in Jersey, you don't just get grass shrimp, you gotta know somebody to get grass shrimp. That's and that's true. how it gets done here, you know? That's true. What size fish uh, can we expect, Dave? So the weak fish have been mostly just under the 13 inch mark to just over the 13 inch mark. Um, some of them are going as big as 15, 16 inches maybe. I grew up in Brooklyn, and uh, when I first moved down here to Jersey to work for the Fisherman Magazine with Nick and Dave, they invited me out grass shrimp and weak fish. And I had only caught weak fish as a bycatch for fluke or blues or bass on soft plastics. But he brought me out here and uh, he had them frenzied up to the point where it was one after another. I had never seen so many weak fish in my life being caught on these grass shrimp. It was phenomenal. Dave chummed them up so thick and they were so heavy in the slick that we, we, we tipped it with, forget the grass shrimp, the grass shrimp would just got them frenzied. We put, Nick took a little piece of shoelace and put them on here and we caught them on shoelace tipped in the slick. So it was an amazing experience, I'll never forget it. That's why every time Dave invites me out um, fishing for these grass shrimp and I'm always uh, all aboard. Look at this little morsel. Uh -huh. little, little buddy. Oh, I got a little buddy. Good, good, for, the, good for the kids. <laughs> That's cool, you can see them side to side here. What they look like, one's puffed up and the other guy isn't puffed yet. But uh, that's cool, they got the little beak there, you never really want to get bit by them, but. I wonder what he's thinking. Ah. Oh, there he goes, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Such a cool fish in Barnegat Bay. Let him go back in. That's cool. I got a net, uh, Austin. That's bigger, man. Oh, that's that's a nice fluke. You can set out going for whatever. I'm always gonna kind of make it into a fluke trip. <laughs> nice fish, dude. There you go, there you go all dog. And look, he got he's got my jig in there too. What? Get that guy. <laughs> I told you, dude. We both caught him, dude. Both caught him. My, my lore is. Look at this. We got both fish in there. Hey, nice fluke, Nick. Thanks. I appreciate it, Dave. Whatever it is. I caught a nice fluke. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? He snagged so. my line. That's what you got to do. You're hijacking my fluke. My fish. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, thank you. I caught this. I caught weeks. I caught some thank puffers. Thank you. I will <laughs> let my fluke go. <laughs> Putting this whole wad of shrimp on that hook. Hook or a weak fish on this, maybe. He's got, oh, he's dogging. They, they might have won the first weak fish uh, competition. Look at that. There it is. <laughs> That's a weak fish. Right? Oh, that is so beautiful. Look at this fish, Barnegat Bay. Captain had to show us how it's done. Look at that, I call them all yellow fins and old spike tooth. See, they got the spike tooth in there. All right, nice work, Dave. Thanks. Ooh. One of the most beautiful fish in Jersey. Dave Austin and I battled some stormy seas, but the next day's fishing brought the sun out and some serious bay action with the son, Nicky. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Honoszewski is brought to you by at Nick Honoszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman's Supply. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Honoszewski is brought to you by at Nick Honoszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman's Supply. this kind of weather, right? I'll take it. What's up, Big Nick? <laughs> Grab that, brother. Round two for us in this beautiful sunny skies. And we got Nicky Dudes over here. Let's right. do it, Nick. Been Should so be good. Long, brother. What's I going know. On? How you been? What's up? Good to see you. Uh, good seeing you, too. Uh, I'll be fine. It's going to be a good one today. We'll see what we can uh, come up with. Hopefully those fish will be biting again, you know? It looks good. It looks like we got the conditions we're hoping for. All right. Go again. We'll see if we can get some bigger weak fish. Maybe some bass, bluefish, kingfish, blowfish. All of those, yeah. a mixed bag. So Dave, what's 
the plan today? So to get everything in so that we could do our bay fishing and we could do some jetty fishing, our timing this morning it looks like we should start out shrimping in the bay, trying for that weak fish mixed bag. And then the timing is going to be right around noon today for us to try anchoring up and using that same live grass shrimp chumming into the inlet jetty. Sometimes we can get the short schooly stripers right. and the blackfish um, doing that cool. same thing. Right, we got a variety of fish on tap today. so. Under these beautiful sunny skies, let's hope they hold up and uh, let's bend some rods. <laughs> Some shrimp in the water. Alright, get the slick rolling, brother. Oh, yeah. That's what brings them in. I love these little jigs right here. How cool is that? Tip them with shrimp, put them down. Chris the shrimp and loaded us up. That's the candy right there. That's, that's... Oh my god, that was a wheat fish. Was it? Yeah. When it came in? You don't get a lot of visual weekies here. Wow. Usually hickory shad. Oh yeah, look like Oh, come on, really? Yeah. The weak fish are hard to see in the slick, but that was a weak. Wow. All right, we got stuff happening. It was a nice, one, Nick. Yeah. nice. Oh, Ricky's got a better one on it, looks like. Oh, nice. Want a two for one here? Yeah, look at that action. <laughs> Woo! Too cool. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful fish. Whoops. Once again, the bejeweled treasure of Barnegat Bay. Weak fish. We're going to let him go right back. Look at Nikki's big fish over there. Yeah, they really are a beautiful fish. Yeah. Kind of got that leopard print on the back. Our little eighth ounce painted jig head. Pink's always good. Chartreuse is a good color. Just pop two on your jig head, under the chin, out the skull. Let it sink. Crawl it back. Oh, he's on again. Oh, nice. Nice. nice work again. Wow, they are spiky. Yeah. Look at yeah, he died like that. Look how bizarre. Look at that. Striped burfish. He died like that in the water, I guess. He died inflated. This little striped burfish. Porcupine fish, different than the northern puffer fish. Crazy, creepy looking. Yeah, the cloudy eyes, isn't it? Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah, feels like, feels like a hickory shot. Oh, little, oh no, little silver perch. Ah, interesting, little silver perch. What do you know about those silver perch, Nick? Uh, they travel in very large schools, uh, part of the croaker family. So sometimes when you unhook them, you could kind of hear them drumming, but. Kind of looks similar to the weak fish, they're in similar family, got that same yellow on all the fins and stuff. Yeah. Got a spike right there on the gill plate, so I'm kind of trying to hold them down like that. This is, this is insane, we're getting all weak fish coming through here and like, it's almost like a, like a whole blitz of weak fish hitting all the shrimp. There's gotta be dozens and dozens, if not up to a hundred out here right now. They're all just going through, they're all two to three pounders right now. I swear, I haven't seen this since what, Dave? Like the late 90s, early 2000s. It's rare to see them like visual in the slick like that. Yeah. Usually just these brown backs come through and yeah. occasionally you grab a glimpse. But today they're really visual. Yeah, it's unreal. Nice work. Unbelievable. He needs some drag that I can't get. Oh, up. no drag on the game. Oh, he's got to use his skills. Oh, he's even putting more bend in that rod. That's a, nice that's a beauty. <laughs> Bring him up with a cane pole. Ah. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice work, Dave. He's a chunk. Look at that. Show that camera. He's even hitting the little pink little... Uh, soft plastic. Soft plastic there. Tipped with a couple of shrimp. That's classic. It's like a quarter ounce, yeah. eighth ounce head. Beauty. Look at that beauty. Beautiful. Look at that beauty. Wow. Look at that fat chunker. Look at that. That is a beautiful wiki right there. 
Oh, well, Nikki's hooked up, but we got to catch that tide at the inlet, right? Yeah, it's about that time. I think uh, we had a good session here. We fished. <laughs> good finish. Unreal. And uh, we'll go try that jetty using the same bait. Yeah. See if we can find any little stripers and maybe some blackfish next thing. That'd be so cool getting blackfish on the rocks here and some bass. Oh. Ah, right to the end. <laughs> Drag the river. Right to the end. Unbelievable. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Boys, look at this. Oh. Wow. Oh, <laughs> That's a true Jersey weak fish right there. Born to get bay at its finest. That's Beautiful. pushing up into not tide runner status, but I mean, this is a nice three and a half, four pound weak fish. We haven't seen them like this in I don't know how many years. At least I have. I'm sure Dave has, but. Unbelievable. We little spike teeth in there and everything. Oh my gosh. That is the higher end of what we Just an unbelievable you. fish out here. Just like old school, man. Oh my gosh. That was the perfect Just ending. Just like old school. That was the perfect ending. Now we gotta go hit that jetty and see what's up. See what other more species we can yeah, put on man. deck here. Woohoo! <laughs> So you could see where the jetty ends, right. where that last high rock is. But it doesn't really end. It continues all the way to this tower, this monument, right. underwater just by a foot or two. And that's the fish magnet that's in here. The whole idea is when we get that shrimp slick going, it's going up against the submerged jetty with the tide pushing into the inlet, roiling it all up. We send the shrimp baits out, either like a, with a little split shot or a little float, get it right close to the rocks. And as soon as it gets right near those rocks, usually a black fish will come off and hit it or a bass or something like that, right? That's right. Every hit comes right at the rock. All right. Well, let's get going with this, man. <laughs> I think I got to switch up on the wheel. No way. Better fish. Yeah, yeah. Bass or blue? Blue. Blue. Thanks, blue, though. Yeah, like I was saying, the blues really like the shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Little chopper blue there. Jersey blue. A little bit bigger than the ones we were getting with Austin. Oh, look at this. Did you throw that whole meter over? Oh, yellow eyed demons. You can see their beautiful yellow eye. Everything went. That's where all the business end is right there. Where is it? Get in back in. Anything's under that school of bunker that we just saw. Time to put on the old Savage Gear long cast minnow. Got these blue fish around. That thing's gonna destroy them. Something's going on on this bunker school. Feel them falling. Just got hit again. Could be some bass in here too. He's back there again. There he is. <laughs> nice. Feels like another little chopper blue fish here along the Jersey shoreline, right at the end of September. Oh yeah. This light tackle Shimano gear is awesome to fight these fish. Anything that's metal like this, anything really shiny, they're just like, they're a glutton for punishment when it comes to these silver shiny lures like the long cast. Let him back in, try and see if there's any bass in there too. Yeah, oh. so big came through, dude. Look at this. Google snagging his bunker, letting it drop underneath. See if anything bites it. Another one. Another one after another blues, you know? All the same size right now, like three, four pound chunker. 
usually you don't want a teaser on here, but I'm when the bluefish are around, but I'm I am trying to get a bass in here. Yeah, it's alive. Nice. That's, the, that's the species we're looking for right here. How cool is this? All right, pull them up there, Deej. Little chocolate chips. This is a small little blackfish here, Tog Tog. And uh, just one of the coolest fish out here in Barnegat Inlet around the rocks and the jetty and stuff. They eat all the crustaceans, like uh, you know, green crabs, white legger crabs, and obviously grass shrimp too. Legionnaires, I gotta say, this is just awesome being out here again with you guys. I think we're gonna wrap it up, man. We got our weak fish, we got some blue fish, you know, grass shrimping, and uh, this is just like, this is something I look forward to all the time, especially with Nikki. Not so much you, but uh, <laughs> Nikki for sure. Husky. Yeah. Husky, so, it's been great. Yeah. I just love how you're showing us the whole Barnegat Bay, the whole shrimping thing cast and lures like the savage gears for the bluefish and uh we saw that big bass right at the end that was so yeah, sick that man. was awesome <laughs> well anyway brothers really appreciate it i'm yeah. the high flyer <laughs> yeah, Barnegat, yeah. man. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Konaszewski is brought to you by at Nick Konaszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman Supply. Barnegat Lights, legendary shores, hold some suspect stories. Dave, Austin, and I are headed to the Salty Bar Kubels to talk it out. We're at Kubel's right now in Barnegat Light, which is really famous, you know, dive bar. Bait, not a dive bar, but, you know, a, a fisherman's bar. Commercial we're, fishing we're, bar, yeah, recreation. All the docks fishing. around here and stuff. And it's actually kind of, you know, cool being here. Funny enough, what, we're sitting at uh, Anthony Bourdain's table when he did a, a TV show here, which is cool. You know, God rest his soul, too. You know, but uh, it's just amazing how all these old seashore towns, even in the off-season, are popping with good food, good times, good beer, you know? Absolutely. Well, well we've been working all together we met at the fisherman magazine in what 1998 something like that yeah yeah it's crazy you were working there as an ad sales guy right right and then i came into circulation and then austin came in after me doing uh, ad sales as well <laughs> I, was, I was fresh out of college i just graduated college my mom thought it was nuts i was like i want to work for fisherman magazine <laughs> you ain't gonna make a living out of that yeah. you know what i mean? walked into the fisherman magazine with uh, a black suit and nick First person I saw was Nick, and he just laughed. And I think he barred our boss. When Austin came in the first day, straight out of Brooklyn, you know, wearing that nice, beautiful like Armani suit, coming in. Me and Dave were like kind of in like t-shirts and like slicks and stuff. And then after like a week, he stopped wearing the suit, and then one day you came in with the t-shirt on, and Pete goes, "Yeah, I kind of liked when you were wearing the suits." I, I said, "I said, Pete, I'm selling ads in bait tackle shops." And um, I'm asking a guy for ads, and he's elbow deep in Killy, Killy, and, and and I feel a little uncomfortable. He's like, okay, how about just a polo shirt and some penny loafers? I'm like, okay, that's a compromise. He's like a full, a full out suit. We got the uh, experience after college working for the Fisherman Magazine is priceless. The friends I made, lifelong friends, the fishing family. I mean, I always love fishing. And I love working with children. So I, I worked fishing. And I have all those contacts, and I, I fish with you guys all the time. But then I work with the children during the uh, during the school year, and uh, so I have the best of both worlds. So I'm happy the way that all turned out. It, mom, it was a yeah, blur. Yeah. I was, think I was there five years, but it was the greatest job. It was the greatest place to work. Right. No, you know what's unique about what happened there? Because it never happens. It's a is that we all said, yeah, yeah, we got to keep in touch. We got to keep in touch. Because you say that at every job you ever have, and you move along, but you don't really ever see those people again. Right, right. And we've never lost touch. That's crazy. After 23 years, I think yeah. we've all known each other, which is which is unbelievable that we stayed in line. But you know what? Fishing brings us together, you know? All which is, Which is what yeah. fishing does for a lot of people, you know? 
How many friends can you count on, not only to fish, but just to be there when you need it? Maybe over 20 years, Dave, Austin, Nikki, and I gravitated toward each other as we all share the same passion and love for fishing. But I like to think of it as earning a true family that being born by blood sometimes doesn't come with. When you want to fish, pick the company that makes that day all the better in life. That's family.